This is the cloud forest of the Amazon. It is a remote and inhospitable place. Yet last year, deep in the jungle, one of the most remarkable archaeological finds of the century was made. A sacred burial ground full of ancient mummies was discovered. Soon, rumors spread that these mummies were different to any ever found before in South America, that they had discovered a lost race of people, until now assumed to be nothing but legend. The chroniclers always describe them as beautiful people, a tall, nice, uh, lighter complexion. The Spaniards reported that there were blue-eyed blonde people in Chachapoyas or in the Cloud people. The Incas found them to be the most beautiful women in the empire and they were uh, sought after by the Inca kings. Who were these people laid to rest in high mountain tombs? And what were they doing there? This evidence may throw light on the origins of the mummies. The mummies were found in the northeast of Peru, on the far side of the Andes. And there are also adult mummies here, wrapped in textiles. These mummies are hundreds of years old and should have rotted in the high humidity of the cloud forest. Yet they are wonderfully preserved. Something extraordinary is going on here, something the team don't fully understand. But as they explore the site further, clues begin to emerge. Wow! Espérate, Peter, te voy a tomar foto. Yeah, posando, posando. Precioso. Extiéndelo despacito. Lindo. This is the best textile we've found so far, in great state of preservation. This is a men's shirt, and the technique for preparing this shirt is quite remarkable. The team's first thought was that they had found an Inca burial site. But figures of animals and demons are almost unknown in Inca art. And they didn't decorate the tombs of their dead with images like these. The pottery is very unusual as well. It seems to be a mixture between Chichacha and Inca influences. Peter Lercher is an anthropologist who's an expert on the cultures of this region. Comparing these pictographs with Inca design motives, it's definite that they are not belonging to the ink culture. They are uh, expressions or artistic expressions of Chachapoyan culture. But who were the Chachapoya or the Cloud people? They are first mentioned in the Chronicles, books written by Spanish priests, but based on stories told by the Inca. The books speak of an Inca emperor who marched his army into the cloud forest in the 1480s and was astonished to find a great civilization there. These stories were dismissed as legends, but not by explorer Jean Savoy. The only thing I knew about the Chachapoyas is what I had read in the Spanish chronicles uh, regarding the conquest of the Chachapoyas kingdom by the Inca Tupac Yupanqui, who reported that he had conquered seven great cities. I didn't believe that uh, those cities had he had conquered had been found. So I decided to launch an expedition to Chachapoya to find the Cloud people. In 
It was 34 years ago that Jean Savoy first set off into the vast uncharted depths of the cloud forest. His exploits were to earn him the title of the real Indiana Jones, and some of the film footage from those explorations has survived. Of course, I love exploring. To me, it was a challenge. I loved it. For six years, Savoy and his men battled their way through the hostile jungle. The rains, the mud, uh, the snakes, thousands of snakes. I was bit by one once, almost lost my leg. I've been very sick with, I got hepatitis, if you can believe that, in the jungle. Finally, deep in the cloud forest, they came across ruins of great stone buildings hidden under centuries of jungle growth. I could actually at times hear the clashing of swords, the, uh, the battles that were going on between the Incas and the Spaniards or the Chachapoyas and the Incas. Sometimes you would find uh, the ceramic vessels just laying on top of the ground. It's as if they had fled these buildings and left them. It was very exciting to, to be in a virgin place that people hadn't been in for centuries. The locals had always known about the ruins. The natives were extremely superstitious about the ruins being enchanted. They talked about Sulpe Machaco, which was a seven-headed snake that would wrap around you like a net. And they were actually terrified. They figured that they would be changed to stone. What amazed me was the large number of round structures, which could, we couldn't explain because the Incas built in rectangular linear lines. These buildings were shaped and decorated in a fashion never before seen in Peru. And Jean Savoy found something else that the Inca had talked about, cliff tombs. When the Inca Tupac Yupanqui invaded Chachapoyas, he stated what I find amazing was the tombs that they built up in the cliffs that uh, housed the chiefs and the overlords of the Chachapoyas kingdom. When he discovered cliff tombs exactly like those described by the Inca and like none other in South America, Savoy was convinced that he had indeed found the last resting place of the cloud people. Inside the tomb are mummies with their hands bound over their eyes. There are also a large number of mummies wrapped in sackcloth with faces stitched on the outside. Look at that embroidery. Oh, beautiful. Look. Wow. Usually they're round faces, no? Charming. But it's obvious that the looters have also got to this tomb first. This is a bundle that clearly use, uh, shows where the looters had wrecked the bundles. This is the face, and uh, well, let's move it here. And here you can see they used something really sharp and they sh sliced and open here just probably looking for metals once they figure out there was nothing they just tossed it well this is frustrating this is this is really destroying good evidence oh my god joey's saying a really big one is coming up no que tan grande joey okay these mummies seem to be physically different as well yeah? Mummy bundles ranging from babies to <laughs> what seem to be really huge people. I mean, judging from the size of the mummy bundles, they must be about, you know, 5'10", 5'11", which is really amazing. I've never been in a situation where I've been handed one mummy after another and just handed it to Sonia, who puts a label on it and then takes it off for storage in the cave and for bundling up for its journey to Lima Bombay. The fact that the mummies are tall is potentially very significant. Buried deep in the Spanish chronicles are fascinating passages describing the cloud people as beautiful and tall. They were a bit different to Andean people and up till today, Chachapoyas, local people look a bit different to, to other Andean people. 
that is reflected in the mummies. I think when the chroniclers said beautiful, it's because they were different and they were strong. Through the bones, they were taller, they were more robust. And if they had to live in this area, uh, certainly they had to be more robust. Near the lake where the mummies were found is the great fortress of Quelap, which is over a thousand years old. Almost certainly built by the cloud people, Quelap is the most monumental structure in the Americas. Its incredible walls are over 60 feet high and stretch for more than two-thirds of a mile. The Great Pyramid of Egypt is a wonder of the world, yet this fortress was built from two and a half times as much granite all of which was carried to a mountain top over 9,000 feet above sea level. Over 500 years ago, the people of Peru knew the secrets of using herbs and chemicals to preserve the human body. Okay. Sonia Guillen and her colleagues are not prepared to speculate on who these mummies were or where they came from. They plan to do DNA analysis and skin testing, which may answer some of these questions. For the moment, Sonia does the investigation she can, in this case, using x-rays to confirm her suspicions that the mummies have had all their internal organs removed. This is the internal cavity, this is the, the pelvic area. If the intestines were present with intestinal content, we should be able to see them. So. I would say that we have here an image that indicates that there are no organs inside this cavity. The incredible discovery in the Lake of the Condors will keep the team busy for many years. But it's now clear that these mummies were almost certainly part of the great lost civilization of the Cloud People, and that they have many more secrets to reveal. These mummies were done in such a way that they looked like live people. They were treated like live people. That's why they were put in such a lovely place, and that's why they were visited. So we will have to keep on visiting them and learning more from them.